Sup and welcome to Slapping Together Selected Sections of Singleton from Synchronized Seasoning. Part 2. Special Saturday Edition. Without a beard. So in this episode we're going to be talking about writing verse and chorus parts. You know, trying to figure those out for real. Writing a guitar solo of sorts. And going back and fixing the intro because it's not cool enough. All right, so let's start looking at the verses and choruses, which take up this segment of the song, and the choruses actually never come back later in the song. Uh, so we have verse, chorus, verse, sort of longer verse extension type of thing, and then another chorus, and then we move on with the song. So the, this started off as a really simple, I guess you'd call it a chord progression. It's just like, oh, I have a guitar going at the same time here. So... So pretty boring, pretty, I don't know, what's the point of even doing something like this? It needs to be spiced up, you know what I mean? So I had one idea to put some information into this riff, uh, into the verse riff anyway, which was to use a 1-4-3 pattern. And if you have used, I think it, that first started in AOL Instant Messenger, the 143 thing, or maybe it was in like yearbooks in high school. And uh, along with that, I came up with this vocal melody, which was something like. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. So something like that. So the idea is to put the one four three pattern into this verse somehow, and to also keep that chord progression, of course, keep the vocal melody somehow, make it interesting enough to where it's worth making. Initially, I was going down this road of looking at only the drums first and trying to program these by themselves. You know, see we have the one, four, three pattern that repeats in the kick drums. And we have these sort of groupings or structures that this one is like five snare hits long. And then we have one that's one and then one that's two. You know, I was thinking about trying to play with frequency ratios in the the subdivisions used or maybe the the period of time between snare hits something kind of like the rhythmic harmony type stuff and translational frames but ultimately i was going down that road and it it wasn't that good it wasn't interesting it didn't sound good so i decided to use up an idea that i wrote down on a list a long time ago which is to start with recording the vocal melody. And I kind of wanted to actually do the lyrics first, but for now, I recorded a scratch vocal track and program the drums along to that. So keep in mind, this is a scratch vocal track. Probably sounds like shit, but... Actually, you know what? Let's, let's listen to just the vocals. So, there's some timing issues in there that I don't really like that don't match up with what I thought that that should be timed like. But it's kind of close enough to, to start working on the drums anyway. So I started with that, and ultimately when I go back to doing this again, I'm going to write the lyrics and make sure that the lyrics like get this part right in terms of the timing, the melody, and the lyrics for the vocals and then go back to the drums and then go to the guitars. So let's take a look at how the drums fit in with that. Mostly it was lining up these snare hits. So. So you'll notice there's some weird rhythmic subdivisions in there. And I'm probably going to send this over to Mr. Travis Orban to have him do the drums on it. And uh, he writes things out in Guitar Pro. So some of these are probably going to cause him some 
headaches, or actually he probably enjoys it. I don't even remember what subdivisions these are. I have to divide the grid into weird, maybe quintuplets if we go and yeah, divide the grid in 40ths. So that's a cool thing about Reaper is that you can make the grid any arbitrary fraction or maybe even a decimal. I don't know if that works. Can I do that? Yeah, it looks like you can. So that's pretty cool. Anyhow, let's look at this in 140 time signature. And we can see these land on some quintuplets here, but we still have the one, four, three pattern. What do these land on? These may be, I really should make the length of these notes indicate what subdivisions they are. Let's see if they're some kind of triplet. Nope, not triplets. What if they're something like septuplets? Oh, it looks like they're septuplets, yeah. So if we put the grid in 156th, I mean, what does a septuplet sound like? Kind of that drunken feeling, I suppose. But all the snares land on the grid. I don't know what subdivision these are, but you know, we get this one, four, three thing. The process here was line up all the snare hits and get all the kicks. You know, we, we had a constraint on the number of kicks that we need to have before each snare. And then we had the other goal of trying to make these weird subdivisions just because weird is good. We should do weird things. And then when you have, you know, a really crazy skilled drummer play them, it'll be really fun and exciting. It's going to be exciting. Maybe it's not exciting. Maybe it will be. Maybe it won't be. Who the fuck cares, man? <laughs> After that, I recorded the scratch guitar. And some of that is definitely not right. I mean, those are the notes that are going to be used, but the timing and some of the little transition type parts, like that stuff I want to be in there, but it's, it's not fitting right. So that's going to have to be redone. Another thing that I really wanted here was like sort of a, the reggae or ska kind of chords. So recorded some scratch guitars for that. I guess we can turn off the click. So yeah, something like that. It's going to be, uh, you know, obnoxiously timed and notes all over the place for kind of no reason. Just to, just to match with the vocal melody that came first. So yeah, that's that. That's the verse. That's the first verse. Now, the first chorus. Same thing. Had the vocal melody recorded as a scratch track first. So what I did here was actually some of these drums I halfway played them on an electric kit a long time ago when I had one. And then since I suck at drumming and I'm very sloppy, fixed them up afterwards and tried to make them, you know, I, I actually quantize these to the gills. And they weren't timed this way. So I took this, copied it in, moved it in, and then move the kicks around to make them fit to accent the vocal timing. And then after that, threw some guitars on there. So remember the chorus from last time? Little heartbeat chord right here. Oh, sounds great. So 
yeah, pretty rough. But it's just got to be there to provide a scaffolding to program the drums, which then become the frame. And then once the frame is done, then you can start putting on the walls and the trim and all that bullshit. So, verse 2 doesn't actually even have scratch guitars yet. This is just vocals and drums. So let's take a look at the drums. I think they're a little wacky. And this is also some drums that I half programmed, half played on a electric kit and then copied in here and then forced it to conform to that constraint of having the one, four, three in the kick. Obviously this is different from the last one and just kind of shifted things around so it would match up with the vocal track. Got some cool cowbell in there. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that. A lot fewer weird subdivisions in this one. Oh, we get some over here. Yeah, actually, I take that back. There are going to be some weird subdivisions in this. these kick hits. So that's fun. Then we move on to a little verse extension, which is like, I don't know. I don't know why I wanted to put this in here. And the memories they come back to me. They're terrifying me. So that was the, the verse to extension. Another bunch of drums that were programmed to have some really busy, busy fills. I kind of like that actually. That was, I was pretty psyched about that. Kind of groovy fill. So that's the verse extension, has some uh, lyrics in there about people showing up in your dreams or something. The second chorus, so to speak, is actually, it has a different vocal melody from the first one. So it's kind of weird. So the, the first chorus is something like... <laughs> Second one goes up a bit. And the memories they come and kill me then. I always thought that I would miss you. But now it's a little different. Got a weird, weird timing there with the, the heartbeat chord part. Have a uh, phrase that I want to work in there fall on my face. I don't know how that's going to fit in there. And the, it's now it's coming back to. I don't know what the hell that, that needs to somehow fit into the lyrics. <sighs> and then it goes into this wacky fill with five finger tapping and quintuplets. I tried making this really long but decided it, yeah that didn't really work so i just used the end of it with the tapping next thing we'll look at is the guitar solo-ish thing So 
So I kind of did this in isolation, which was a little bit of a bad idea because it doesn't really fit the rest of the song, but kind of knew what I wanted it to be and recorded it. Guitar first, so let's listen to the guitar. <laughs> why I'm getting all that clipping. It's probably because my computer is working extra hard to do this streaming of video and audio and record it all. But anyway. Got a nice punch in over here. kind of a guitar solo but it's more supposed to be like just a part that happens to have more guitar notes than usual and the drums are supposed to follow it so it's supposed to be you know musical it's not just like all right we'll play a couple chords for a few bars and you just play whatever on the guitar that you feel like playing and improvise it's it's supposed to be integrated pretty well into the song so <laughs> So program some drums to this as well. Gentle, fast drums. And this was all programmed with the mouse, I believe. Or maybe I actually put in a lot of these notes using my MIDI keyboard, just kind of trying to figure out what I wanted the rhythm to be and then move them around to be the right drum. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't really fit with how the song is supposed to go like it's kind of it kind of sounds cool on its own but the song doesn't really lead into that you know this busy drumming it actually should start off kind of slower like reggae you know a reggae feel because it comes after a part where it's like a slowed down version of the intro like See, it's a mess right now. I've just been like recording garbage over this to try to get the uh, drums programmed. But yeah, somehow this is going to end with. I guess maybe that could work. Like the down, 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 down. Or it could be like kind of a weirdly syncopated reggae feel. That'd be kind of sweet. It'd be kind of uh, obnoxious and cool. We'll see. I'll have to change it later, make sure it all works. And, you know, that's kind of an important point about using a DAW and just using it enough, like spending enough time working in a DAW to the point where you can easily change things around quickly. Like cut, copy, paste, move stuff around, re-record, rewrite, chop it up, punch in, all of that stuff. You know, if you get really fast at doing that, it's only going to help go from ideas to creations faster. And the only way to really get there is to use the, the program and make some junk with it and just keep going. All right, so the end of this solo part ends up going into, it like kind of slows down and goes into this, I don't know, desolation part. So it's like... <laughs> Let's turn off those vocals for now. I think those are going to sound like crowds yelling or something like that. I don't know why, but forget about that for now. So the timing for these little chugs on the toms was done intuitively just playing on the guitar first. So... To get the feel right, did this on the guitar. As you can see, they are not on the grid. 
I don't know how the hell Mr. Orban is going to notate that in Guitar Pro because the tempo of the song doesn't change. I guess that's one thing that I could do uh, to make this conform to the grid is put these really small, abrupt tempo changes. So that end has to build up into this major scale run up on the guitar, like a sequence thing that uh, I believe I found in a tab somewhere as a Paul Gilbert-esque riff. So sorry, Paul Gilbert, for ripping off your style. And I had tried to record this a couple times, and the saddle on my Floyd self-destructed. <laughs> The string kept on slipping out of it, and then I tried filing down the face of it to give it a little bit more friction, the little block that goes in the saddle. This little, little guy. It died. It stripped the threads out of the back of it, so I ordered a new one and had to actually get some shims that go underneath it because it wasn't the same brand. But yeah, Floyd Rose Special, made uh, from cheap, soft metal. You get what you pay for. Should have got the expensive one, but at the time I was, you know, in grad school and pretty poor. So, to get the timing on these Floor Tom guys, I actually recorded on the MIDI keyboard. Check out this clip right here. Oh, wow, that is really great. That is really great and cool. And, you know, it's not actually perfect. So that, <laughs> that run is obviously not right. And all this is off the grid, and I'm going to have to essentially figure out each one of these hits where it lines up with the guitar, which is kind of ramping up in tempo, but I left the click the same because I didn't feel like figuring out what the tempo change actually was. Presumably Travis Orban is going to hate me for that. Um, either that or he may refuse to play that part. No, probably not. We may request that I actually make the click conform to some actual tempo ramp, which will suck. So. We get kind of like a, a standard sounding solo. Played over a part that comes back from before. That needs to be fixed up as well. Then after that, it goes back into the outro version of the intro. And see ya. Song's over. Four minutes and 40 seconds approximately at the moment. Which is a pretty short song, which I was kind of going for. I want the song to be short, somewhat simple. I might actually even cut out some more in the middle here to make it shorter. Simpler. Kind of like that pop punk ska feel. All right, the very last thing was this intro, and I recorded the intro last time. You may remember it. It was probably the only good sounding part of that whole video. What I decided here is that since it wasn't cool enough, I really didn't have any ideas for how to fix it. The first step was to actually name these little tiny sub-modules that happen. So for example, we have one called the triplet transition. So we get some triplets in there. That's what it's named after. This part, the slide up and down lead-in. 
that part definitely needs to get out of there. I'm going to get rid of that and only use it later in the song because you see the intro actually comes back. I'm going to have to keep cutting this up, naming, rearranging the parts, grouping them to get to something that is an acceptable level of lameness. Whoa, you watched all the way to the end, you crazy bastard. All right, well, thank you for doing that. And maybe I'll see you in another one of these. Maybe I'll just finish the song because these kind of take a modicum of effort to put together. And I should probably just get the song done because I don't really have a lot of time or motivation. So, see ya.